Hey y'all, welcome back. So today I wanted to do a, a get ready with me with some new favorites and then also some things that I may have not used in a while. Most of it though is going to be favorites. Hope you guys are all doing well, taking care of yourselves, wearing your mask. If you haven't registered to vote yet, I need you to do that ASAP. So we're gonna prime. First thing I'm gonna do is go in with a hydrating primer, which isn't really a primer, it's just a SPF moisturizer. I'm gonna let that sink in for a little bit. I'm falling in love again with my Becca primer. This is in the shade light and I just kind of tap a little bit. Okay, so for eyes today, I am going to use two things. The first thing is the Pat McGrath Divine Rose. I've been obsessed since I got this. And then my Cleona shadows, which are those square ones on the ends right there. So that is set in. I'm going to go in. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hold on. Obviously, I haven't used this in a while because it was stuck. But this is the Revlon Pore Reducing Primer. So I'm just going to do a dot on each side. I'm going to go in with the Divine Rose. So I want to do a little bit of a smokier look. So I'm going to go in with this shade to start. So tell me how you guys are doing with everything going on. I know. It is crazy. So I live in Texas and I live in a very liberal, not liberal, what the hell am I saying? Conservative. There's really not a whole lot of Texas outside of like Austin and Dallas that are not super conservative. Texas was one of the first places that actually reopened, which was scary. But now everybody and their mom is like, fine you know what, um, but I don't want to wear a mask. So the governor of our state was like, well, too damn bad, everyone's got to wear a mask. Because people were like, literally acting like nothing ever happened. I'm like, oh, the death rates are low, let's go back to normal. It's like, hello, they're low because we had a lockdown. Like, they're gonna go back up if you're, you know, going out and having parties and all that so like I know on 4th of July my whole neighborhood was lit up with parties and it's like come on people don't you want this to actually end one of my co-workers her mom actually passed from COVID so it holds a really deep and meaningful place in my heart because COVID you know COVID killed her mom and so many people are like, oh, the death rate is not that bad. It kill the flu kills more people. And it's like, yes, you're correct in that. But we don't know everything about this virus like we do the flu. Yes, does the, does the flu um, strand change every year? Sure, it does. But we have a much better understanding of the flu than we do of this. And that's what a lot of people just an understanding and it's frustrating as hell because I would like to go back to normal too sure I would have liked to gone back to normal yesterday but the fact of the matter is it's not time to go back to normal yet in the last few months since you guys have seen me if you didn't know I work in a psychiatric hospital so for the last three years because I've been working here since 2017, since January of 2017. I have worked with what's called the acute patients. And that is people with depression, bipolar 2, which is the one that's not as intense as bipolar 1. My whole career has been centered around those types of people. Of course, I, I have like schizophrenia and things like that, but my hospital is kind of set up as it's different floors. So there's the acute floor, which is more the depression 
psychosis mixed in there sometimes. And then the next floor, what we call the chronic. So people with chronic schizophrenia, um, who a lot of time are in and out of the hospital, are homeless, um, or living in group homes, that sort of thing. So um, I have recently been um, placed on the chronic floor. I'm gonna go into my concealer combo. This is the Pat McGrath um, in L5 and the Dose of Colors in three. So, it's been a really, really, really hard adjustment for me. I'm just gonna be like flat out honest. Um, it's been really hard for me. I love what I do. I love, love, love what I do. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Like working in mental health has always been my dream job. It's always what I wanted to do. Um, I've struggled with my own mental health. I have family that have struggled with mental health. So I've always wanted to work in mental health. And not to say the past three years haven't been challenging. They're challenging in their own way. But the difference is I truly felt like I was making a difference. I was so used to working with high functioning um, people that like I had a full resource list for people. Like they would be getting huge packets of stuff when I discharged them. Because you know, when you have insurance and you have a family that's like able to you know get to you to different resources and things that's that's what makes me happy um and i am very good at my job um it's a very fast-paced environment i'm gonna go in with the makeup forever foundation stick and the new foundation i've been loving is the wet and wild dewy oh my god it's so nice but and if you ever get this foundation, just know it smells like fish. It's smelled like fish since the first day I got it. But, um, so the chronic unit is a totally different ball game. Essentially, what you're doing for them is a lot of them either have no insurance or have Medicare and Medicaid. And I got Medicare and Medicaid on the other floor I was on, but there was a lot more family support. So most of these people are living in shelters or group homes. And if you guys also didn't know, part of my job is I do group therapy. So we have seven groups a day and I do um, some of those groups Look how pretty that finishes. Anyway, um, so it was very rewarding. Were there people who didn't want to be there? And were there people with psychosis and things? Of course, yes, always. But the hardest transition for me, I remember the first week I was working on that floor, I just broke down and I was like, I don't feel like I'm helping anybody. I don't feel like my groups are any good. I, I don't. I don't feel like I'm helping anybody and I just I truly broke down because I felt very defeated because of that so I'm gonna um, just name these off real quick so I can just keep talking so bronzer I have a new one from Tarte that I've only used one time um, this is like a little mini guy this is the breezy um, bronzer in Seychelles this is the I've been loving cream blushes in general um I could go on and on but um the Fenty one is what I'm going to go in with today this is rose latte and then for highlighter I have been using my mac double gleam so we're going to go into that um I'm going to use my sponge for pretty much everything I am doing so I had a little bit of a meltdown and I think it's it's okay I mean I just because I work in mental health doesn't mean I am you know immune to having some breakdown and it was just hard for me because I was so used I mean since I started my social work career I have been working with 
high functioning people. And like I said, they have their own challenges. You know, it's very family based. So you just have to get used to, you know, talking with families, giving resources. And one of the things that I loved about my job was education. You know, a lot of times um, people either like just didn't believe in mental illness or they um, just didn't understand it. I have a lot, there are certain communities that um, it takes a lot of education to make them understand why mental health is even a thing. Some people just think it's people with bipolar are just acting out and they can absolutely control themselves, which a lot of people don't understand. Like when you're not stable, if you're not on what's called a mood stabilizer and if you have bipolar, a lot of times you don't have control of your actions. That's what I did a lot of. I even like, I made a whole spreadsheet of like all these resources specifically for families. So um, if they had any questions or whatever, um, they could refer to that. And I, I was passionate about, I mean, I'm still passionate about my job, don't get me wrong. But I was just feeling super defeated. And so on Wednesday of this week, I have no idea when this will be up, but on Wednesday of this week, I told my boss, is there any way, because I already had Friday off because I had worked the previous weekend. I worked last weekend and I said, you know, I was already going to have a three day weekend. I was like, Hey, can I, can I take off Monday too? Um, and she's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You know, I told her, you know, I've been feeling super burnt out. Um, I'm going in with the pure cosmetics brow pencil, but, um, so my boss is like literally the best boss in the entire world. I love her to death. Um, but yeah, so I decided to take a long weekend. And I'm very happy. I feel very refreshed. It is Sunday when I'm filming this, but like I said, I have no idea when this is actually going to go up. Could be a month from now. But um, I just feel so refreshed and ready, ready to return. So I'm very, very um, thankful that I have a boss that kind of understands that if you work in mental health and you don't have a boss like that like get the hell out of there as fast as you can because burnout is such a it's such a huge thing in any job but especially in healthcare, um it's just so easy to feel overwhelmed and like you're not making a difference you know if you have a lot of families that are yelling at you or you know patients that are you're trying your best with but sometimes they just are hard-headed or hard to deal with which is gonna segue me into something and I'm very passionate about this I'm going with my beeper lip liner and then my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick and then my gloss from Lunar Beauty in Moon so there is a meme that's been floating around saying the following put it on the screen somewhere so you guys can see it and it says something along the lines of so a social worker is going to deal with a psychotic patient covered in shit that's literally what it said so I honestly think it's hilarious like hilarious and let me tell you why after I put my lip gloss on last week I had a patient who was literally eating their own poop because they were so psychotic eating their own poop and that's not the first time I have dealt with poop and vomit and all sorts of things in my career and the thing is is me as a mental health professional I am a social worker so I don't usually get involved with like the aggressive patients I will be the the talking person 
But as far as like how we handle it, yes, sometimes we have to use medication for intervention, but the way that police are obviously trained is so wrong. So what we do, we have plenty of aggressive patients. A couple weeks ago, I got a scale thrown at me, a vital sign machine thrown at me, a monitor thrown at me. Um, and you know what we didn't do? Hurt them. What do we have to do sometimes? Hold them down. They calm down. And we can say you can do one of two things. We can either restrain you and put you in seclusion or you can calm down and you know, and they usually calm down. People are in all sorts of situations. We have people coming high. We have people coming drunk. We have people um, who are clearly manic out of their mind, don't know what they're doing and we don't hurt them. And I'm going to be real honest with you guys. Police, when somebody's acting up in jail and they don't want to deal with it, they send them to us. They call an ambulance and they send them to us all the time. From every county out there, we get them from 50, 60, 70, 80 miles away. And we deal with them appropriately. And we treat them like they're a person. Now, I know not all psych hospitals are created equal, and there are not, there are some that are not good. But overall, like, the majority are treating their patients with respect and not hurting them like the police do. So, when I see a meme like that, it makes me laugh because I know we can handle those types of people way better than police can. Can talking to somebody... Um, not always work? Of course. Of course it cannot always work. If they are clearly psychotic, usually de-escalization is not going to work. But you can restrain them. Like, it's not that hard. We, I have a couple guys at my work who can restrain somebody by themselves. And if you need multiple people, call for backup. Then you both hold them. One person handcuffs them. You restrain him until you get him into the car. And then you call the ER and let them know that you're bringing in an aggressive patient. And they handle it accordingly. So, off my soapbox, let's go in with the powders. Guys, these powders, I think I've talked about them before. But the first one is the Laura Mercier. So, I'm going to show you my under eyes now. No powder. And then I am going to do a side by side. So I just tap out whatever creases I have and then just go in with a sponge or a brush and just lightly tap that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the difference. Look how airbrushed, you can't see any lines or anything like that, like how normal powder does. So I usually just put powder on one side and then tap out the creases on the other. But see, so pretty. And then I'm gonna go in with a big powder brush. The Charlotte Tilbury powder. This is the magic powder. I have tried the pressed. I didn't like it. It was really, really cakey on my skin. But this one I just put on a big powder brush just to kind of set everything down. Obviously, normally when I do creams, I'm not powdering my face, but just, and it totally, I got lipstick. It totally like airbrushes my face. And sets it beautifully. So I just kind of do the bottom half. I don't ever set my forehead, but yeah. So if you have dry skin, those two powders, I don't even know where I just, oh. These two powders are bomb. You need to get them. Um, get them on Mercari, get them somewhere cheap. But this 
it's gonna last you for freaking ever the Laura Mercier I've had this for about two months and you can't even tell that I have used any at all um I honestly haven't been going for powder lately because when I wear a mask it doesn't matter if I have powder on or not my makeup's going away rather quickly but yeah so thank you for listening to me ramble thank you for getting ready with me let me know how you are coping um with everything going on what has kept you sane i would love to know i love you guys so much i hope you're doing well and taking care of yourself and i'll see you next time